Welcome to our AMD Lucid automation testing channel. We will have a series of talk about Selenium automation testing, which will help you understand the basics of Selenium and also guide you to build your own Selenium automation project. You may access our test project and guide in the description. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for any new videos and updates. Today, we will talk about Selenium commands part two. Today, we will look at Selenium commands part two. First, we are going to look at choose file buttons. Now, what do I mean by choose file buttons? Well, I mean these buttons here that allow you to choose a file. For instance, I will upload uh, this logo uh, right here. We can do this using Selenium commands as well. What we do is we can use send keys and send the image files that we want to upload. As we see, that those two commands uploaded the image2 file and the book1 file as well. Moving on, we can also use Selenium commands on drop-down lists. For instance, on this website here, for the drop-down list age, we can select the age we want to select. Let's say we want to select age 12. We can do this with Selenium commands by using the following commands. In this command, we tell Selenium to select the drop down list option 12. As we see, the Selenium command goes to the drop down list and selects age 12. Next, I will show you how we can combine multiple commands together to run a test. For example, to fill out a form and send it on a web page. First, sometimes we need to notice that when we first open a website, not all of the elements are shown. Sometimes you must tell Selenium to scroll down to find the elements on the web page. For instance, on our web page here, when we first open it, this is what we see. Sometimes what we need to do is we need to tell Selenium to scroll down so that it can see all of the web page and in our case, the form. So how do we do this using Selenium? Well, here is some code that we do. First, these first few lines of code here clears out the text boxes and enters the text that we want. The Java execute script here scrolls the window down so that we can see what is going on. When we run this script, we see that the Selenium commands filled out the form, scrolled down the page, and submitted the form.
Next, I want to show that Selenium automation tests do test sequentially. For instance, we see that if command 1 passes, the test will continue to command 2, and then command 3, and then command 4. However, if somewhere along the line, for instance, command 3 fails, the Selenium automation test will not execute any commands afterwards. We can use the try catch statement to force the test to continue even if an error happens. However, IntelliJ will show you that the test passed. Later, we will introduce how to use reporting tools to record each step so you know if it passed or fails. Here is the send form text of code that we used previously. However, one change that I made was I changed here service into service2. Since there is no element on the web page that has the name service2, this should fail. And as we see, this step fails. And we also notice that none of the steps afterwards were executed. For instance, sending the form. If we go to our if we go to our IntelliJ console, we can see that it fails right here where it was unable to locate the element. As we mentioned earlier, we can use a try-catch statement to overcome this issue. If instead we use a try-catch statement uh, to try to find this service2 uh, dropdown, this is what we will see. that the test passes and the steps afterwards were performed as well as the form was sent. Next, we will talk about Selenium weights. In web tests, sometimes web elements will need time to be loaded or to be enabled. We should let Selenium commands wait for a period of time and then continue to do operations. Selenium uses weights for this purpose. For example, thread.sleep can be used to pause the execution of the current thread for a specified time in milliseconds. Explicit wait allows your code to halt program execution or freeze the thread until the condition you pass resolves. Implicit wait, WebDriver pulls the DOM for a certain duration when trying to find any element. In fluent wait, it defines the maximum amount of time to wait for a condition as well as the frequency with which to check the condition. In our following example, we will show thread.sleep and explicit wait. In this example here, we tell Selenium to click on a button on a web page
After clicking the button, our website disables the button for 15 seconds. In this thread.sleep statement here, we tell the program to wait five seconds and then to check if the button is enabled. Since at the time after five, five seconds, the button should still be disabled, we see in our output that the button is not enabled. If we change this five seconds into 20 seconds, we would expect to see that the button is enabled. First, after clicking the button, it is disabled for 15 seconds. We tell the program to wait for 20 seconds. Now the button is re-enabled by the website and the program has waited 20 seconds and will check if the button is enabled. As a result, we see that the button is indeed enabled after waiting 20 seconds. So this is thread.sleep. We may also use explicit weights In explicit weights, we tell the program to check when the button is re-enabled. We see that the program waits until the button is re-enabled to check the status of the button. And because of that, we see that the status of the button is enabled. The code shown here performs the operations we are talking about. In the first line of code, we click the link albertafirebands.ca. Following that, we use get windows handles to get the information of all the tabs that are open. We use switch to that window to switch to the tab that was most recently opened. Note that the tab we were currently on has the index zero. Following that, on the new tab, we scroll down and we click staff directory. Let's see how this code runs. As we can see, the Firebands your tab has been opened and switched to, and Calgary is searched. And following that, we told the Selenium program to click on Staff Directory, and we are directed to the page that we want. That wraps Selenium Commands Part 2. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you soon.